folks and welcome back to my YouTube channel and this is part 3 of Old Rusty. If you've been watching part 5 that you have seen that we have built these new uh, brackets that would go on to the rear support structure of the cabin of the truck. And that's what we'll mount today and we'll finish it up today by um, repairing this lateral beam and, and this one is really uh, in a bad shape but we will rebuild it and, and this is the original one and we're going to replace it with this steel tube which is very strong and solid it's three millimeters thick so that will be quite good uh, the original one is a bit thinner and it is not really a tube it is actually banded uh, steel but it has some flanges on the edges and for the flanges I'm going to be using uh, these metal bars which I will weld onto um, this tube here so that will give me exactly the same dimensions and it will be probably a lot stronger than the original one and at the end uh, then we will put the wings on um, when I say the wings that's what I mean you know we will put this stuff on at the edges like so and then we'll put the brackets on and then we'll mount it on the back of the cabin and then the cabin should have its support back and that should be it for this video so keep watching start so i'm going to start with preparing this big bar so it has exactly the same dimensions as that one and i went for a 50 millimeter bar and this is exactly um 50 millimeters as well so it's exactly the same dimension um the only difference is it's been a straight cut i need to have a slanted cut so i will grind that off so um let's mark it so now we're gonna measure out the flanges that need to come on there uh, because on the original part they are a bit shorter on the sides so we'll do exactly the same thing all right so um you can see that this flange is not the full length so i'll need to mark it on both sides that i cut it to the same length uh, so this is nine and a half nine and a half and i'm going to use a magnet uh, because it's easy to put my meter against 145 and a half and I should have exactly the same 145 and a half yeah I learned my lesson with safety goggles um, a while ago I had a, a chip in my eye when I was welding so since that day I, um, I always put my goggles on The other side, um, which is this flange over here, huh? so that's the other one we need to build. And I'm going to cut that at 45 degrees. By the way, I'm using very thin cutting wheels. You can get them in different sizes, but these are real thin. They're also called flex wheels. And it's so much easier to cut. Well, we've got the metal all cut to length and, and, and shape. So now I'm just gonna clean it up so it's an easy weld. Okay. Um, Cleaning the metal is probably the most important part before you start welding because you can't have a clean weld if the metal isn't bare and clean. So we are about ready um, to start welding. So let me put the rig together. I'm about ready um, to start welding up the uh, structure. Uh, I've got the big metal bar and then I've got the little sidebar identical to the original one. So I'm gonna TIG weld it in place. So I've supported it, placed it in an angle because it's easier welding and if you do TIG welding it's a great way of welding but it's damn hard to do it properly because you have to be very stable and to maintain the puddle. Um, 
you know so it's not that simple and I sometimes have a problem with it anyhow um, this way it works well I'm gonna spot weld it in a few locations so it's kept in place and then I'll do some more in between I am NOT going to weld the whole length because that's not necessary I will stitch it as they call it uh, and that is more than good enough the ground up I let some gas out because in the beginning you mainly have all oxygen and not argon all right so that should be good enough let me put my brand new gloves on how about that huh not bad I mean they look real neat don't they not much longer though No, I need to lower it a bit. So we finished off one side welding. I'm going to clean it up and then we'll do the next side. Yeah, it's still pretty hot. So let's clean up this side. I finished off the um, crossbar for the construct of the rear cabin. And this is the one and it looks exactly like the original one. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So now it's time to put up these wings. I already put one wing up on the other side, but on this side I haven't because I want to show it to you. So um, this is the wing that we made yesterday or the bracket, whatever you want to call it. I drilled some holes on the side because I'm going to do some spot welding where I will simulate spot welding through those holes. So let's fit it in and then we can start welding it. So far it's been going pretty good. Um, Although sometimes the welding isn't always that easy, um, but it's all right. At the end, it worked. Okay. So I'm gonna uh, lock this nicely in place and probably I'll do first the spot welds uh, and then we'll do the rest. They're not really spot welds, but I drilled holes in the plate so I can weld them up. That's why I call them uh, spot welds. The cleaner it is, the better the weld. Alright folks, it's now three and a half hours later and the part is finally finished. The only thing I'm going to do now is paint it with zinc uh, to give it a protective coat and then we'll see if we can get it mounted in the vehicle. I think it looks quite good and it's exactly the same size as the old one, but I'll show you that after it's painted. So I'm going to be painting it with uh, zinc paint. Uh, this is very good against rust because it's going to take a while before it's going to get its final coat. So let me put my mask on and get it painting. So that's it, uh, it's painted. I'm gonna let it dry and then we keep um, building. But first, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee. I'll see you in five.
All right, so uh, it's about time to start cutting off the bottom part of the cabin uh, because that is totally gone. And I'm gonna weld on a new plate uh, from the white line and downwards. It's about 170 millimeters. I already start cutting a little piece off, uh, but I'm gonna cut the rest off now and then we will weld on a new plate. And after that, we'll, um, we'll mount the part that we prepared today. So let me get on with it. There we go. So that looks fairly straight. Uh, so now we're going to clean it up uh, and then it's ready for welding. Okay, that should be good enough. So uh, let's see if you can fit the plate. I have a new sheet of uh, metal in place where we cut out the old rusty part. So now I need to weld it along uh, the seam. Uh, I double checked it that the distance uh, is 40, 440 and that's correct. And I also did the same thing on the other side because I want to make sure that everything is the same. Uh, I don't have much references on this truck. So that's also 44 or 440 millimeters. So I'm going to tag it in place um, and then we'll see how it goes. So hopefully that will work out just fine. We'll try a few spot welds and uh, see how it goes. Uh. So guys, uh, we've got the rear plate in place. I even got the support beam from the left to the right in place. Took a bit of uh, fiddling to get it in, but it's in. Uh, and now uh, we're holding it in place. It's a dry fit, as I call it. We're holding it in place with some clamps just to see if everything fits. So I did check that all the distances were correct on both sides, so that's good. Um, so now all what's left is actually to tack weld it in place, uh, but I'm not going to show you all that because you know how to tack weld. Uh, but let me show you inside uh, how it looks like. So here it is, um, the cross beam that we built today and parts of it we built yesterday. And it's fitting pretty well. Now, of course, it's not against it. Let's see if I can push it in like this. I have to put some clamps on. We'll spot weld it in all the different areas and then we should be good to go. Uh, even the uh, pockets that we built, and let me see where I have one. Ah, I got one. Um, you remember these pockets from two days ago in, in part number five? Um, they're here to actually hold the sill. They go over here and they will fit in like this. Let me just check, right? And yeah, like so. So that's how they will go in. Uh, a little bit bent and because the inner seal will come along here. So I probably will have to put a rope up or something like this. And that's where they're going to be. And the inner seal will be welded against it. And then through the hole it will bolt down to the chassis. So uh, that's still a little bit of work to do. And right now I'm tired and I'm going to quit because 
it's around midnight and it's been long enough uh, but as you can see it's moving forward and I really would like to thank you all and I know I have some special fans out there that make a lot of comments thank you so much I'm not gonna call all your names because that would be too long and I probably would forget some people but again guys thank you for viewing and you know keep uh, cheering for me because um, I'm gonna need it there's a lot more work to be done on this truck because it is really in a bad shape and I don't know if I will ever get it back on the road again. Wow, I'm just kidding. I'll get it on the road. Anyhow, I would say see you in my next video. Bye bye.